Hi, I'm Norm Abram. Welcome to the New Yankee Workshop, where today we're going to build this seven draw chest on chest. It's made out of cherry and it features some nice solid brass pulls. We traveled to old historic Deerfield, Massachusetts for inspiration, and I'll show you how I built it coming up next, right here on the New Yankee Workshop. The New Yankee Workshop features the craftsmanship of Norm Abram. Well, today we're in historic old Deerfield, Massachusetts. And in the late 1600s, this was the site of some ferocious Indian attacks. In fact, the entire town was pretty much destroyed. But in the 18th and 19th century, on the same site, there was some wonderful houses built. And throughout that period of time, up until now, they've been filled with some glorious antiques, like this one, the Sheldon Hawks House. Now, this was built in 1743, and it's only had two owners up until the time it became part of the museum. And inside, there's a wonderful chest on chest that I want you to see. Come on. Boy, how's this for a room? They would have referred to this as the South Parlor. And it's filled with some antiques. Look at this, a nice table with a China tea service all set out, ready to go. And another table over here, nice antique chairs. Looks like we're ready for dinner almost. A huge fireplace with some nice brass and irons, nicely polished. And look at these panels. This one is the one that really caught my eye. It must be 30, 40, 30, 35 inches high. This would be the width of the tree. It's all one board. Amazing. Now over here in this room, this was known as the South Kitchen, and here's the piece that I want you to see. This was built by a local craftsman by the name of Daniel Clay, and in fact, a lot of his pieces are on display here at the museum. It's a cherry chest on chest. It has a nicely shaped leg down here, some flutes on this corner, which lead up into what's known as a lamb's tongue. And I have some pretty good ideas of how I can make that back at the shop. There are eight drawers, and look at this. The rails that come across have a slight, like a dovetail fit here so that it won't spread apart. Some very elegant brass hardware. And these key plates, they're just there for decoration. There's no working hardware in there. Anyway, I guess on this top drawer, you wouldn't need any hardware because only the senior set in the family can see what's in there. I think it's very well proportioned, and I'm going to measure it up. Before we get started, I'd like to reassure you that if you'd like to build an exact copy of today's project, that a measured drawing and a materials list are available. And you'll hear more about that before this program ends. Now I'd like to talk about shop safety. Make sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your tools. Knowing how to use your tools safely greatly reduces the possibility of personal injury. But remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. Now I'll show you how I built today's project. Well, I've just finished belt sanding four cherry panels, which will become part of our version of that wonderful chest on chest that we saw. The panels are made up of three solid cherry boards, three quarter inch cherry glued together. But I use a method of biscuit joinery, a special tool that cuts a slot and these little beach biscuits. And combined with some glue, you're gonna end up with a joint that's extremely strong. Now, I also made four pine panels back here. You don't see these, but they become the bottom and top of the lower chest and the bottom and top of the upper chest. I'm going to get started by ripping all these panels to the correct width. But the first thing I want to do is give myself a nice, clean, smooth edge. So I'll make one pass over my joint. that smooth edge planed, I'll put that against my rip fence. 
This is for the bottom panel, and I want to have a width of 17 inches finished. So I'm going to cut it about 17 and a 32nd, and then run it through my joiner again. Cross-cutting my panels perfectly square is a cinch with my homemade panel cutter. I've just made a rabbit joint along the back edge of each of the cherry panels. And that's so that the plywood backing can be recessed on the top and bottom chest. I've readjusted my rip fence to make a rabbit in the panels of the lower chest only. And that rabbit has to be 3 8 by 3 quarters to receive the bottom pine panel and the top pine panel. So back here at the prototype, I want to show you how the upper chest sides are joined together. There's a cherry rail, which also supports the draw. I suppose I could have joined that to the side with a butt joint or even a dado joint. But I chose a dovetail joint because it looks good and it's extremely strong. And I made the dovetail joint with this 3 quarter inch bit, but it's too big to make it all in one pass. So I'm going to start with a 3 8 inch straight bit set up in my router. I've laid out the location of each rail, and I've clamped the straight edge on the right distance from where I need to make the cut. I want to come in about two and a half inches. With all the straight cuts made, I'll now switch to the dovetail bit. With the same dovetail bit mounted in my router, which is now under this router table, I'm able to make the male part of that dovetail joint. For the upper portion of the chest, the top and bottom pine panels get fastened with some screws. Well, glue along with our dovetail joint, are the only things necessary to hold the rails to the sides. Well, let's take another look at the upper chest of our prototype. There's a one inch cleat on the side of every draw, and the draw will rest on it and slide on it. Now I'm going to fasten that cleat with a screw in the center, and there's a, just a little da dab of glue beneath it. And then on each end, I'm just going to use a nail, no glue. And this will allow the side to move freely and not split. So the quarter inch plywood on the back of the case is fastened with a little glue and some brads. I've just taken a piece of stock, which is about an inch and three quarters by an inch and five eighths, and put a rabbit in it. It'll become one of these corner posts on the lower chest. The rabbit is so that it'll fit over the side panel. It gives me more glue surface, and it's just a much stronger and better joint. Let's look at some of the details of that corner post back at the prototype. Notice that it's sculpted at the top and the bottom, and in between it's cut at a 45 degree angle. First thing I did was laid out that sculpting on my corner piece. It takes a little imagination as to how you're going to cut that. But what I've done is made a cradle into which the corner piece sits. And what that does is it holds the piece at exactly 45 degrees to the saw blade. So I feed it through using the cradle.
of my drum sander attachment in my drill press does a nice job smoothing out any bandsaw marks that were left. And now we're ready to start the fluting. To do the fluting, I'm going to use my overarm router, which is set up with a quarter inch round nose bit. And again, I've set the piece in that cradle. I've laid it out, and now I'll just lower the router in and plow out the material. Now the rails on the lower chest are a little bit different. They're dovetailed to the sides, but they have to fit around the corner. So what I'm going to do is hold it so that the face is flush, trace the outline, and now I want to remove this material. Well, that's the first cut. The second cut can't be done in the miter box. I can do it either by hand or use my bandsaw. Okay, that's the way that should fit. Now I'm ready to lay out the top and bottom rails, and I'll cut those the same way. Now this bottom pine panel is also notched to go around the corners. You won't even see this panel. The top panel, however, you will see the front edge, so I'm going to add this piece of cherry, and to join it together, I'm going to use some biscuits. So now I'll just cut some slots for the biscuits. Now the lower chest is assembled using some glue, some screws, and some clamps, much like I assembled the top one. And I'll set it aside to dry overnight. Well, we've got some sunshine this morning. And the cabinet has dried overnight, and I can remove my clamps. Now, it's really just the glue that holds the corner to the sides, and also these rails, and everything is set together now. I've made some runners for the drawers, a couple pieces of stock glued together and nailed. And they get fastened similar to the ones in the upper chest, just a little dab of glue in the middle where the screw is. I'll fasten it to the side and add a couple nails. Then I'll be ready for the back. Now I'm ready to start working on the legs of the chest. There's six pieces, three on each side, two on the corner, which are mitered, and one on this back edge. Now this shape is cut on the bandsaw. And this shape, which may look complicated, is not that difficult to make. What I did is I started out with a piece of eight-quarter stock, and using a template, traced the outline of a section through that leg. And here's the material I want to remove in this area and over here. I'm going to remove this material using my router, which is equipped with a round nose bit and a fence. Now here's a scrap from the prototype. And what I did is made a series of passes to remove the majority of material, and then I'll sand it out later to make it smooth.
Well, that takes care of that. I'll sand the rest of that out. Now over here for this corner, I can take that off on my table saw. tracing the outline of the leg from a template I made of the original. It's on the back side of the piece that I just milled. I've laid out three rights and three lefts. Now I'm going to use my radial arm to cut the pieces to length. Well, the bandsaw does a real nice job cutting these out. Here I'm using a one-inch drum sander with some 80 to 100 grit paper in it to clean up the bandsaw marks along the inside of the contour. Well, all the legs have been sanded with just about every machine I have here in the shop, and they turned out pretty well. The idea now is to miter the corners to make those front pairs of legs. And to do that, I use my table saw and my miter gauge. with a glue block and a little glue, some screws and a clamp, we'll put these corner feet together. Well, while those legs dry, we'll start working on the drawers. The first thing I want to do is work on the front. The draw front has a rabbet that's on the top and the two ends, and that's so it'll fit over the case. Now, I've set up the table saw with a dado head cutter and a wooden fence to protect the blade, and all I have to do is run it through. Each draw front is joined to the side with a series of dovetail joints. So I've clamped the draw front in the jig with the inside of the draw facing up, and I've set up my router with a collar and a dovetailing bit. The collar simply follows the template, and the bit does the work. Watch. Now I'll just flip it end for end and do the other edge. Now it's a good idea to keep all your draw parts together as you do the next step. 
I need a groove in the sides and in the front for the quarter inch plywood bottom. And I've set up my dado head cutter in the table saw and now I'll just run them through. The back of the draw is joined to the side with a half inch dado joint. So I need to make a joint down the back edge of each of the side pieces. I've readjusted the table saw and the dado head and I'm ready to make those cuts. The next step is to put this decorative edge on all four sides of the draw front. And I'll do that on my router table. Even though the drawers vary from one to another, they're all made exactly the same way. takes care of all the draws. Now I'm ready to go back to work on the legs. You saw me put this small block in the corner to hold the miter together. Now I've added two more blocks along the top edge for some additional support. And they just get put on with some glue and screws. Now the back legs don't have a return, so for some additional support, I've cut this pine block and I've added some biscuits in there for some extra strength. And this also gets fastened in place using some glue and screws and one little biscuit along the back edge. I'll tell you, this thing is heavy. I'm going to set it on the bottom chest and fasten it in place with some screws. I've added a molding down here at the bottom. Make a transition between the leg and the lower chest. It really dresses it up. I'm going to do the same thing up here where the two chests meet. Add another molding. On the top of the chest, I've added some extra cleats to give me more nailing for the molding. It's a two-piece molding, and this is the first piece that goes on. Now, this top piece is a piece of one-by stock that sits on the lower piece as sort of an OG detail, and that just gets glued and nailed in place. Okay, let's see what the whole thing looks like. Well, that's not too bad. I'm not going to bother putting the hardware on it now. I'm going to wait till after I finish it. As this cherry ages, it'll darken naturally, but it takes a long time. So I'm going to help it along by putting on a coat of wild cherry stain. And after it sets up for a bit, I'll wipe off the excess. Ah, now that's the look that I'm after. To protect this piece, I'm going to put on several thin coats of a water-based satin finish polyurethane. And it's amazing that all you need is a foam brush to put it on. 
That does go on a little bit milky, but it'll dry perfectly clear. Now this 320 grit wet dry sandpaper is the perfect choice for sanding between coats. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna fill in any nail holes. I'm using some colored putty and you just rub it into the hole and take off the excess. Now I don't wanna kid you for a moment. This is an ambitious project. But what do you think? Doesn't it look like it's worth it? I hope that with the help of the videotape and the measured drawing and some time, you'll be able to build this one too. Norm Abram is the author of the book, The New Yankee Workshop, which is available in bookstores and libraries nationwide.